what we're trying to do here, what we've put forward to you as a proposition, is that we can think of the way in which acting leads through learning to understanding. And we can think of how understanding leads through learning to acting. We can bring the two together. And so we'll start asking you to think about how acting leads to understanding. This is, after all, what babies do. It's the Piaget argument. And then to consider how understanding leads to acting. And then in the last afternoon, we'll try to put them together. one in particular is a pleasant sound to me and it became pleasant after listening to the computer game Pong for a too, just too long a period of time and I started really appreciating the sound of a real ping pong ball. This is what you do when you get a box full of crystals at a garage sale. You know? <laughs> and I'm particularly proud of the fact that it's attached to foam which makes it easy to travel with it without them breaking. It's a double dogger phone. <laughs> Double dot. Mm. Domestic. Yeah. It needs an amplifier because it's so quiet. Get strapped on here. That would be very difficult for I'm particularly interested in, in, in human and social affairs. And, mm -hmm. and that makes it important to make a distinction between that the, the monkey knows how to ride a bike in the circus tent and the understanding of the one who learned him to ride a bike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we really had to understand how to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that these are two very different modes of understanding. We so you're sort of suggesting also you can uh, ri do something, ride a bike, but the ability to abstract it, the, yeah. the ability to abstract it is then to learn it to for someone else. To, to be able to teach it or to be able to, to embody it in a system. To abstract it. Yeah, I think it's a bike is a really good example. You know, I mean, yeah. I, I, I have met very, very few people, and, I, and bike riding was one of the things I actually like covered in my PhD, just, just on the side. I knew, ve I knew very, very few people that actually understand how a bike is well, riding. Yes. yes. You, are you throwing up hypotheses at a very small age, and each time you act to see, you know, is there a guess that you're making about it? Or do you just do things at random and see what happens? How do we deal with... I guess it, it applies to situations that we don't understand. It's not all that action up to them, or the next actions. It's the moment of thinking about it. Ah, uh, I've, I've taken a snapshot that I understand. But then you go ahead and do whatever you're doing again, then you're not thinking about understanding. I'm thinking of um, physicists, for instance, Newtonian physics. Was that people were absolutely certain that they understood things according to certain principles? You can change the laws of physics, and then along comes Heisenberg. And Are you working? No, I'm not right here. Is this the spiral group? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that can is. You the spiral. Can you tell? Can you tell? The spiral group. Not really. What spiral? Each group would be invited to spend mo no more than ten minutes uh, sharing what they have done when all of the groups have shared, then we will have an opportunity for questions.
but we're looking to have questions that illuminate the pattern that apply to all the groups and to the ideas that knit them together. We each told our own stories about acting. The focus of our discussion, we realized, is, was around motivation. What is it, why is it that people act? Why, what are the things that cause people to choose to act in the world? Um, what are the different sources of, of motivations that people have? One of the reasons why people um, need to act in the world, choose to act in the world, is because they're interested in the world, interested in understanding. If you're going to say um, what is the nature of acting and therefore what is the nature of understanding, then you have to make sense, first of all, of the why, of what it is that drives people to act. And so, so the, even if this is incomplete, the thing that I, that I hope that I would like to drive home as, as a kind of takeaway point from our group is, is the importance of understanding motivation, the importance of understanding what is the purpose for which people are acting. More relevant. I nice. Gray. Smile. Patience. Cybernetics. Turning pages. <laughs> More cameras. Cross legs. Tripod. Conversation theory. And across mouth. Feedback. Particularly interesting about something. We had a discussion about whether learning was linguistic. And um, so, at least for me, the, uh, the verbalizations and the action uh, were related in, uh, in, uh, to the themes of the discussion about acting and understanding. Is a clear goal important in uh, getting understanding? Then making mistakes is essential, obviously. The, the role of mistakes and how, how what you see as a mistake are absolutely crucial. You are active and passive at the same time because you play, uh, may be playing with others. Acting and doing concerns the how, whereas understanding might be about the why. Learning, which happens all the time, mm -hmm. every time we adapt, and, s and, 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 and when we intentionally seek out to learn. That's a distinction that I wanted to make, make clear. I, I would also add here that, uh, which Michael didn't mention, Michael. The, grou the group, uh, I, would, I would just characterize the group as ending in disagreement. Okay. <laughs> so, so do you not think that they're synonymous? I do no. not. No, I don't. No, no, I, don't. I, I see learning as a, uh, an interpretation over time of an increasing competence and understanding be an evaluation of competence at a particular time an attribution made by the whoever is observing that circumstance and seeing that appropriate behavior. So for me, uh, it is being, being involved in the action and the learning and the understanding that I get from considering and doing, acting, learning and understanding that is for me the benefit and the reward. One I call comprehending and the other I call procedure building. The two models are isomorphic. We use different labels for the same processes. We make similar distinctions in our models. We label them differently. So we're going to come away with our own different understandings of how we wish to use or choose to use the words acting and understanding and learning. Hearing everybody else's description of the understanding and the learning and the acting makes me confused because I have to shift in my myself something around so I hopefully will come to a new understanding. Yeah, yeah. But before that stage for me comes a deep confusion. Yeah. If we're in that table, I can, by pushing my buttons, which I used to do all the time mm -hmm. up to ten years ago, I would set up the wrong, I would tread on someone's toes before even knowing it. And the respect and the love in that sense allows, I've noticed, you, you can, it, it's right, it works for Matran and it's true. It's giving the space that the other person, whether a bright person, thick person, a black person, white person, it doesn't matter. But there's a space for, as you say, to listen. It's the same thing. And when the person hears people listening, then the confusion is less because they will express and invite the resolution of the confusion. The confusion is 
real, but it's through the social exchange, not from a personal angst that there's a resolution in my mind. explanation is at the time it has to fit with what we see you know I think you look at this you see the stars going like that okay there must be a big sphere that goes past us you know, that's what we see and it fits with what we see and actually yes if the earth is going round that would cause it and you've got to kind of like readjust it, it's, it still explains what you see but but now we have all sorts of instruments infrared radio telescopes and there's a whole lot more information that we have to now try and make fit with a coherent story and it's you know that's where black holes and big bang we didn't have a small big bang you know but it fits with all the other information i have, I have a metaphor of my own experience when i started work, learning about Rana's work first first couple of years in great enthusiasm i suddenly felt like i i had this flying carpet i could see yes, over yes. everything and i could go anywhere and then somebody pulled the rug out oh no, no no i'm still sitting on this <laughs> I have acted, I have an experience, so I conceptualize things and I put it across. So that is externalizing, that is also leading to understanding and then, you know, further to the uh, action, do, learning by way of doing that. What's the distinction between acting and doing? Acting is more, I prepare myself to act. It is not completed. I, I did not complete my this thing. I have certain uh, prayer experience. That's about it. But I have not really uh, conceptualized. I have not really reflected. I have not really socialized. I have not done any of this. So that particular doing, is very much required. Doing is uh, follows uh, learning uh, like in a sequence. Uh, you can act on old information. Doing is acting on new information. So, and there is a choice of, because of the sub-acting, there's a choice of four types of doing. Okay, uh, which is um, following, uh, socializing, externalizing, internalizing, combining. Uh, all of these are sub uh, uh, subgroups from acting. We began by talking about what we thought of last evening and about the different approaches we all had, and then we got into the different bubbles that different groups are in, in society, in life, in politics, and how they might intersect and share so that they can understand the doing and acting and maybe some of the learning and understanding that went around them. And we got into how confusing this could be because we've got these smaller things where you have a certain level of interaction, but we have, when we get a larger one, we have the factorials that come in and we end up with an unmanageable number of potential connections. And so we need some way of sorting things out. So then we began to talk about different organizational templates that help us sort that out. We've been talking a bit about organizational templates and structures, and we realized that an organization is not an object, that um, everyone inside and everyone outside has multiple perspectives on how they conceive the organization, and it's actually an emergent property of those uh, perceptions and interactions among them. Every circle here of, the, of these rings uh, they are. They create their own reality, their own epistemology, but there are intersections. Some people jump around. The, the 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 question of language came up. So do you when you move from one circle to another, uh, you adopt a new language, and do you forget the old one, or do you remember the old one? And when you switch between the groups, you can switch languages as well. 
And where does new things happen is in the intersections, where the circles overlap. That this is where different worldviews mix, and there is the possibility in these intersections for new knowledge, new understandings to arise. Then there came that point that we realized that there is nobody who can say that theirs is the ultimate reality or that you have a very different way of relating to others in other circles if you believe yours is the right one and thus impose it on, us, on the others versus saying mine works for me. It's very important to realize that things are explanation and that they are not the truth and that it depends in which explanation you live also influences the action that you take. One of the things that Stafford's model does that's interesting is it says these are the necessary connections. And if you see an organisation that seems to be functioning okay, but there's no formal structure that you can say, oh, this maps into, it's very hard sometimes to use the viable systems model to actually map out an organisation. But the fact that it's working okay alerts you to go and look, and you'll find that across across the networks there are certain people having essential conversations that are making that organisation work because they can't do their job unless they talk to someone else. And so we started to, to think about the networks that, that work, at, as it were, at right angles almost to, to the vertical organisational hierarchy and that those are the things that are helping to make it work. And, that, and we also had a little brief discussion, I think it's Cotter in recent Harvard Business Review was saying that Hierarchical organisations are good at optimising what you do, but they're not very good at responding to change. It's too, they're too slow moving. And that therefore you need to have what he calls a second operating system, which is a network drawn of people drawn from all the different levels of the hierarchy who are focusing on change. So that was a, another interesting piece. One of his nice papers, Stafford Beer, refers to e organisations as esoteric boxes. And it, esoteric means like hidden secret. So if you wish to go and work in, to understand them, you have to get in there and learn about them, learn their culture, learn their language in the sense that you're using. So esoteric boxes. Um, the main comment I want to make, I, I thought this is a beautifully clear exposition of uh, one way of looking at it, say you, you brought together uh, many of the concepts from, the, from Stafford's work on organizational structures, VSMs and so on, and uh, what is what I would consider to be uh, the, 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 the broader view of, of, of Pasky and conversation theory when you stretch it into social organisations, the perspectives of perspectives and the different subgroups which form conversations within conversations with conversations and all the network and the networks on top. I thought that was beautiful. I really, I call that social cybernetics, but you, you, you put it all in so beautifully. about action in terms of structure action contingency relations that's a there's a whole literature about it and then I realized understanding is not that prominent in that literature what is understanding doing in, in relation between action and structure understanding mediates between the two so you have action and other events taking place behavioral events and then by understanding them you relate them to a cognitive structure in one way or another, <coughs> cultural domain. You also mediate by understanding these other structural aspects, for example, you explain it in terms of the biology, or you explain the action, or you explain it in terms of the motivation. That these are all motivations, all explanations which relate the action to the structure in terms of uh, mediating. And then I thought understanding has a specific role in that mediation because we have other, all other me mediating mechanisms such as uh, languaging, yeah? which is also between action and structure. So understanding has particularly the role of making it possible for the individual to mediate yeah? because uh, understanding is very much in the mind and the minds are then in between the structuration and the action and the taking action. And then I added some concepts to that um, because if we are in that reflexive layer, it is not action, but it is deciding how to recombine the structures into uh, taking an action or taking not an action, or even not to take a decision and be unintentional about what is happening. 
the thing which made a lot of sense to me, the, the, the thing which I was highlighting as really important, was understanding of other people. And that comes from observing the observational actions of, of myself, you know, observing other people and actually interpreting that. And, 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 and actually, what we were thinking of doing, although there isn't time for that, we were thinking of actually uh, replaying well, we the... Just did it. Well, we have just yeah. done it, but yeah. we were thinking of doing it a bit more explicitly, yeah. <laughs> of replaying the actual discussion that we had, just to illustrate the fact that most of the time, uh, the discussion was of the quality, and I certainly appreciate the quality of the discussion very much, where it led to an increase of understanding in me of yeah. the positions yeah. of other people, yeah. and also an emergent, a bit more of an emergent sort of, there was a bit of an emergent sort of understanding, shared understanding. This conversation uh, triggers for me a reflection, uh, perhaps reflected in other things I've heard in this conference, and that is whether language uses us or whether we use language how we understand that dynamic. There's but also a problem between action, acting, and what we call structure, the structure of language according to the Saussure, for instance. What we are saying is a realization of a potential there is. Mm. But, but of course, that raises the, the question about how, whether we repeat the language which we've used in one context that would represent the, the thought process of the trend on in that context. You know, I don't know if that would work or not. If there are many linguists, uh, uh, among them constructivists, who would deny the idea that there's a representation, there's just a presentation, as Heinz von Kerstler told us in many occasions. Even though it was a subversive of the message, it actually made the message stronger. The main task that confronts us all in this room is <laughs> sense making. We can't reduce people to processes of sense making or learning, they're people. <laughs> Acting, feeling and thinking. Exploring the experiences. The uniqueness of each person. In the multiple personal world. Blessed are the confused, <laughs> for they shall find their way. <laughs> Cursed are the certain, for that's the way they'll stay. is if you understand everything, you've got it clear, then you can go and act. What's the training <coughs> bit that's in between understanding and acting? And my kind of, uh, this question I've just been asking myself over the last day or so, <coughs> where I've got to with that learning is, I understand the situation, but something's happened, something new, and I need to learn about this problem or this, the aspects of this particular situation in order to apply my understanding when I act. So that was, that was one part of it. Then, then another thing that occurred to me is that most of the time we kind of poke things and we find things out and we, uh, so there's a kind of learning doing loop that's going around and, and it seems to me that understanding is understanding how the whole thing is working. So that was relating to what we were talking about. And therefore that the understanding is kind of emergent out of a continuing action uh, learning loop. There are so many aspects to understanding. Some understandings limit the choices, some understanding widen the choices. Uh, for example, if you understand the limitations or the, you understand the power structure of a situation, then maybe what the understanding limits your choices to one kind of action. We spent the first part of our session talking about our contexts and our cultural backgrounds and our educational backgrounds and our work experiences to understand our context for understanding and so that we could understand each other's understandings. If you understand the world, uh, basically you're validating your image against what you see outside. Let's not say reality or something like, but you're, you're validating the, the outside against your, uh, your model and you're, you're meeting predictions that your model is giving. So understanding, if, if your model checks out in predictions, then you probably understand.
I have expectations of the world. Right. And I'm continually testing those expectations. Right. Right. Those and those things, those things which I can predict, I understand. Yeah. And those things I can't predict, I don't understand. Look, to understanding is meaning you have a mental model which is dynamic, that, that you can run your mental model, as it were. And that's what gives you your expectations. Or, and and, and if, if they're born out, then you think, oh, yes, my model might be right. I, I took an action uh, that I didn't, I had a, an emotional uh, reason to act, and I acted. I didn't understand totally why I acted at all. And I didn't have a way of explaining that action until many years later, where I got a, a theory and a model that gave me a way of explaining my action, which was based on uh, uh, an in intuitive sense of discomfort in the organizational setting that I was in, and the dis decision discretion that I had, which was being denied. Okay, and so that's where we we talked about how if you're not in a structure that allows you to express yourself or your your abilities or your decision discretion, it has an effect. And if you've got a way of explaining that with a model or a theory, it can help yeah. in your understanding of your action. And if your actions are effective based on what you understood of that situation, then, then you feel that's, that's confirming it. But if something happens, you, you may say, oh, my understanding is incomplete. I've got to understand more. I don't understand this part of it. It's, a, it's pretty difficult to say, you know, uh, acting, learning, understanding. Do you, you, you have to have some understanding before you act, or that it's in, in, implicit in, in acting, but you may have a very limited understanding. Yeah. Does it matter that we come up with the idea? Does it matter that I hear ideas of everybody? And I realized that I was with my group and I felt a connection with each one of them. And then I realized that this connection was not entirely reciprocal because I wasn't sensitive enough and I felt regret. Yeah, we understand a lot of things in terms of ethics, in terms of regularities, in terms of systems, but then when it comes to action, it is not being implemented or it is not being in action. So these two are two separate things. So my question was, can something can be done for this or how do we correlate this for such systems? American society, for whatever reason, um, People come together to solve problems, and when the problem is solved, then they go on to do something else. And so we get together and we organize things and we lobby and we set up labor unions or political parties and so forth like that. And my understanding of developing societies is they don't do that so well because they have ethnic groups and religious groups and factions and the people in one valley don't talk to the people in the other valley for historical and geographical reasons and so forth. What happens when we reify understandings in our institutional arrangements? And what I heard Stuart saying was I felt a rather romanticized notion of my image of the US at the moment in its dysfunctional Congress and its <laughs> dysfunctional institutional arrangements, which have perhaps passed the time of when they were they used by date in terms of the understandings that were institutionalized at that historical moment when you formed the constitution or those particular practices. And so I, I think we have to carry with us the agency to undo historical understandings that are reified in our institutions. It was a kind of 
cybernetic conversation. I asked what a cybernetic conversation was, but I learned that any conversation is cybernetic, so we don't have to worry about that. What I perceived was any word we choose, such as understanding, has many different understandings that were enriched in this morning's conversation by the different directions that came up as if they were random, but they were in essence all somehow corrected, connected to understanding. So, see. so it became a matter of having a dimensionality or different domains revealed in which the word understanding has different meanings. usually look at what happens when two people are in conversation or communication. Do you understand? Comprendez-vous? C'est l'heure? Qu'est-ce qu'il qu qu y a? So we have two people attempting this business. I make noise and sound for something called language. Language? You understand language? Which is this, uh, I provoke you to understand by saying... <laughs> One day, I provoke. And, and comfortably playing with the real challenge in a group like this of speaking in English only. Mm -hmm. Because the meanings we attach to words are so culturally and contextually derived <coughs> that even the same word in English is not the same in American English. Mm -hmm. Spanish. And never mind Spanish or German or Chinese, etc. Et So they were having to act what they were saying in their language to each other, demonstrating, moving people to communicate by physical action because the, actually the, the language action was failing. But at certain points, at certain points, I mean, in, in terms of sitting down and getting up, you were actually beginning to learn what the Chinese words meant, but they were done through signaling. Coordination or coordination? <laughs> Languaging. <laughs> To show you understand. Matrana? <laughs> Pask? <laughs> Bateson? You, you're marking and then you're passing? No, no, uh, ah. On ne peut pas communicate. <laughs> One cannot not communicate. I think yesterday we were talking, we were sharing stories, and that was very good. Today, I think we were derailed by social media. Um, and I think the problem with social media is that, uh, that there's just too much. It's too much. It's too big, you know. And I think people withdraw, withdrew into, as Tom was saying, they're falling into narratives uh, instead of asking questions. I was led to ask the question silently, just to myself: What is the difference between a group? group discussions where people actually just give their opinions or say that, make their points, and, and, and the sort of group discussions where people feel that something new is actually being put together. One of the things about social media which came up was this issue of, 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 of um, cult of nice. <laughs> and that was really interesting because the, the cult of nice, you know, like you can't say anything uh, disturbing to other people. So you have to withdraw into niceness, and that actually compresses the variety even more. It's not just, a, it's not just um, you know, you've only got the text, it's actually even worse than that. <coughs> and I think we've got a long way to go to uh, think about how exactly we, we, we use social media positively so that we can um, enhance the ways in which organizational structure actually adds to this act, acting, learning, understanding cycle. So, so I think what's interesting is, is what is it that enables self-organization to happen? Why does it not happen? Why is it sometimes just chaotic? What changed between the past and now with the social media? And I think we agreed that the, what changed from the past is that the, uh, the feedback loop 
uh, uh, for reorganizing, for um, uh, like adapting, was slow in the past. Now it increased with the with the with the, multi, with the multimedia, with the sorry, with the social media. Uh, the speed of change increased by a lot. To my mind, also, the increase in speed in, uh, uh, like widens the uh, the bandwidth of the feedback and widens the variety of feedback actions that can happen as well. So this is a real, um, I think, uh, cybernetic observation. We wanted to act. Without acting, we're not going to be understanding it. Yeah, we were talking about uh, <laughs> an experiment, a neurophysiological experiment that had been done. You may be familiar with it. There were monkeys, baby monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> and mummy monkeys. And in the first group, they took away the little baby monkeys and they kept them isolated. And in the second group, they gave the baby, they took away the baby monkeys, but gave them fluffy dolls to, to hug, cuddle and stroke. And in the third group, they left the baby monkeys with their mothers. And then they looked at the, uh, how the neurons in the brain were all connected up. And they discovered that the isolated baby monkeys are much less neural connectivity than the baby monkeys that could stroke their dollies who had <coughs> in sequence much less neural connectivity than the baby monkeys who'd been allowed to stay with their mothers. So this led us to think to some degree can we say that experience is prior to acting mm. that the sensation of being stroked was what led to that experience of, uh, to, sorry, to the, to the brain actually making those neural connections. We, we struggled about models. We talked a lot about conceptualization and understanding. And I'm going to walk around as I talk. Like this. this model, for those of you who haven't yet seen it, um, has a central loop which talks about a relationship between experiencing and acting, arising from the things that Graham was just saying, um, connected by learning. And it suggests that then understanding arises as an emergent property of that relationship. <coughs> but learning is also still present within the, that level where the understanding is being formed. And I think it's right that we, that we haven't presented this model until the end of our discussion, having, having done these other things and having had the monkey story because this is an illustration, in my view, of the fact that an abstract conceptualization only follows out of this uh, cycle between experience and acting. People who sell models for a living in one way or another identify themselves with their model. And if their model is questioned, or God help you them if somebody wants to borrow their model and adapt it, <laughs> then it is, it's threatening to the self. Is threatening to their own sense of self-identity. <coughs> and I didn't say this in the group, but I, it occurred to me subsequently, um, the words of John Sturman, who is Professor of System Dynamics at MIT, and has made a lot of models in his life, who, who puts it very succinctly that all models are wrong. In Victorian times, many scientists thought that if you put an animal in isolation in the dark with no stimulation, it would do nothing. Okay, they thought they needed to have some stimulus, some experience happening to it, which actually even do anything. Now we know. Now we understand that we are, um, you know, we are active, dynamic systems. We cannot not do something. And we also understand that all the all the sensory apparatus is prepared for something to happen to it. Your eyeballs are primed. Your, your neurons in your eyes are little pockets of energy which are waiting to capture a photon. So even the, the, there's nothing. <coughs> it's not a raw experience which your body in, in some sense prepared to receive. So when we were in the circle with the heads, um, we were acting, in some sense, I would say, we were acting upon the person's head in front of us. The or person acting and stroke. But we were, <coughs> and we were experiencing being, having our head stroke mm -hmm. behind us. people as I understand them 
believe that there exists a pre-given reality that understanding not take is place a process of approaching present understanding knowing of that, that pre-given reality. reality and that the learning that process actions is trying cannot to take place except with gap respect to your what present understanding, understanding that pre-given reality, pre reality in your reality. understanding would anyone like to comment on something that they either agree or disagree with with respect to that perspective Yes, I just want to point out that obviously from your description, cognitive science is statics. It's fixed, it's not, it's, it's not dynamic. What it needs is motivational science with it. To make it dynamic. Can you say that again? Sorry. Sorry. Uh, you were cognitive science. Disagreeing? You were agreeing or disagreeing? Um, <coughs> I, th I see the limitation of the statement. Which is a disagreement. disagreement. Yeah. We talked a, l a lot at this conference about context. And so I think that agreement or disagreement comes with the context. Mm. Yeah. So in some contexts, it makes sense to split them up. Mm. Conceptually, these are important distinctions which we can relate to different aspects of experience. But we also know that in the moment of experience, these are much or always the same. And so the question becomes, at what time do we want them completed? At what time do we want them separated? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, also looking for people, somebody, somebody who, who's the experience of trying to split these things up. Um, whether it's been something that you can take on or not take on, or something you rebel against. But I've said I, I reject the question because the yes or no are not adequate categories. And they are for the same for being a dual system. There are good times for all. I can make about as many of my own experiences about the society. Play the game of big science. Darkroom was talking about unlearning and not forgetting. And at the individual level, sometimes unlearning and forgetting is constructive, and sometimes it is deteriorating or destructive. And I was thinking of examples in society where unlearning and forgetting had led to a reduction in complexity. And I'm thinking uh, the Roman Empire, the Mayan Empire. Uh, I'm thinking about some communities that have forgotten how to do democracy. Uh, I'm thinking about Native American tribes who forgot their stories and their dances, and sometimes even their language. And I'm wondering what implication that has uh, in terms of our acting I like to and put, understanding uh, uh, is how do we I think it's useful to build computational of models of cognitive processes. Don't why we experience those fears. If all the acting we do is just talking, and and roughly all, the analogy you know, is change. Uh, uh, there's no actual change. change. There's no actual change in is our understanding. Just as then, you have an immune you know, system for your body. It's good about talking about change your understanding. We're just talking about change.